And welcome to patch day 28. I'm going to make something that kind of mimics Metasynth here. Uh, if you've never played with Metasynth, you probably should have a play with it. Uh, basically, we take an image and scan across that image using what? Um, yeah, so you scan across an image and resynthesize that <coughs> image into sound somehow. So I'm going to start with making myself uh, not a message, actually, a new object, um, ngit.qt.movie, uh, caps lock, jit.qt.movie, yeah. <coughs> um, I think the default size is 320 by 240, but I'll type that in just in case. And just for a start, I guess I'll read a message, get a message for read. Uh, a file called sunset.jpg, JPG. Um, that's something that's in the Mac search path. It's a file called sunset. Yes, that's beautiful. Um, in case you're not already aware, um, you can load still images into um, Jitter. I'll just put a comma with a bang on the end of that so that we can see it, uh, we can get ourselves a window, a jit.p window, so we can see the beautiful sunset. Click on there and that should display the image. So when you're loading still images, you only have to bang them once for the um, to get them in or to get them to display. You might need to keep banging them depending on what you're doing with them. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is to create something. Um, I'm going to create a sub matrix because I'm going to be interested in reading just the uh, like X, uh, like a whole column of Y values according to an X value. So we can see that I'm going to make this, pic this picture bigger. That's how much I like it. All right, so I'm going to make something, a new object here called jit.submatrix. Okay, and I'm going to give it an attribute, um, the dim attribute. I'm going to set that to one because I'm only interested in looking at one um, one uh, column. So that's that's the dimension one on the on the x axis. Well, only the sub matrix will only have one be one pixel wide, and then two forty high. That works for me. You can see already if I um, hook that up and actually duplicate this jit.p window, make it make I can make this one really skinny, just to um, you can see that if I re-click this to load the mess uh, load the picture and have a look at it, um, you might not really be able to tell, but it is in fact the first pixel of this on the on, the, um, on that first pixel on the X and we can um, scroll through this thing would probably be the next thing this sub matrix takes uh, the other important message that the sub matrix takes is a, a, a message that calls for the offset so I'll make a pack object here with offset and I'm going to change it on the X axis so this will be the number that's interchanged and Y we don't want it to be offset on the y-axis, so zero for the y. And hook him up. Um, and I suppose every time I change that x, I'll change that using an integer. Of course, you could use any number of fun stuff like a counter or whatever to do this. And a new um, trigger, because I'm going to have to trigger the output of the QuickTime movie every time. I mean, the, yeah, tr trigger this output every time I change the offset on the sub matrix. So we'll put that in there and that in there and bang it. So now when you see this, you should be able to see this little slivery window. You should be able to see what the um, Y values are for these X values on the, um, on the, on the, on this image here. So, I mean, we could do something really dumb here, I suppose, like send, see if we wanted to actually see what um, column we're accessing over here and have this come over to a you know have this come over to a 
Let's receive it. And we could have this come over to a slider. I don't know why I'm doing this. I hardly ever do this in these tutorials. But we could have a, tu a slider. Where's my sliders? Slider. And you can tell I never use the palette. Um, I'm always one for making a new object and typing in the word slider because I really can't be asked to know where things are on that palette. All right. And I can hook this. Maybe this like this. This is this is purely cosmetic, and you'll probably know from looking at these tutorials and these videos that I hardly ever do anything cosmetic. I can bring up the slider, um, the uh, yeah, the slider inspector, and I can make it the range two hundred and forty, so that it's the same width as the image. Now, I don't know why I did that. Like I said, that was just something to waste some time I guess. Alright so next thing I'm going to want to do after getting the sub matrix, there's actually two different approaches to doing this and I'm going to do both. Um, the first approach would be to turn this um, column into a, into a max values to be able to access them in, in max and do something there. And probably uh, the two objects you could do to do this would use to do this would either be jit.spill or jit.iter. And uh, since we've used jit.iter before, I'll use jit.iter. How's that? And then out of here, like it says, it's a list of coordinates. It's only got really one Im interesting or important coordinate. Uh, that would be the, the y um, value, because we know the x values are coming from here, and there's only one. Um, and the uh, list of values. So we'll use just um, a couple of different values from this list. Let's go with let's go with what uh, red and blue, since that seems to be the predominant colors in there. So I'm going to unpack first the list of alpha, red, green, blue, which is four. That's good. And I'll need this. Uh, well, I will use this as a as a frequency for OSC banks. Let's just do create a couple of OSC banks down here. Um, OSC bank. Um, I don't know what these arguments are for. <laughs> uh, Five twelve and then forty nine six. Well, I do know what that first argument, which is the one I was interested in. That's the number of oscillators in the OSC bank, and since we have a, um, 240 uh, in here, 240 uh, Y values that we're going to use for different frequencies, we'll make it 256. And I'll just, I'm just going to make two of these, one for the red and one for the blue, and I'm going to need something to play them out through. It will be really groovy, just like Metasynth, red will come out the left channel and blue will come out the right. Okay, the other thing I suppose we do need to do is to unpack this here list of coordinates, even though the Y coordinate is the only one that we're interested in, we'll use that. We can use this um, Y coordinate straight off without any playing around to set the index indices of these um, OSC banks. And then we're going to use something to, again, just have each oscillator set at a certain frequency. So I, there's sorts of all sorts of things you could do here. Um, I suppose I will, what? Uh, well, OK. I guess I'm going to invert it. I don't know if it's going to become clear. That's not um, necessarily clear. but. Um, zero is up here on the top um, of the matrix. That's the zero when it comes to looking at uh, dimension, this, the dimension one or, or the y axis of an image. It's always zero at the top and, and, and maximum 240, 239 at the bottom. We really want to invert that because we want our low frequencies to come from the um, bottom and our high frequencies to come to them from the top. So I'm just going to invert that, um, do something like uh, reciprocal minus 241. So 241 what it, minus whatever comes in here. Don't forget the little exclamation mark there. 
Um, do something else just to because now zero to two hundred and forty or one to two hundred and forty, one to two hundred and forty is what I'm getting out of there now. Um, that's just too low a frequency, as we've probably said that kind of thing before. And then if I do an M2F, which is the logical way to do the, make it higher, um, then obviously 240 as a MIDI note as a frequency is too high. Um, so I'm going to divide that by two to the floating point. So I'm going to forget that already. Oh, will that really matter? Probably not much. Okay. I'm going to use that for frequency. And I can use that for frequency. Frequency, frequency, all right. So it's only the magnitudes or the amplitudes um, of these OSC banks that we're gonna be interested in uh, dealing with now, which is the second inlet. Um, and for that, I'm gonna use just the red, how much red, the, 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 the that, and how much blue. Uh, these come out 0 to 55, which are really quite huge amplitudes or magnitudes. So I'm just going to make a new object here to scale the bejesus out of these things. All right, so if I divide it by 10,000, that might be enough to avoid hearing damage. And, you know, don't take my word for it uh, if you're wearing headphones. Just always be careful when you're doing stuff in Max. Uh, like I need to say that again. All right, so this should do, I don't know if you can see everything that's connected. Yeah, sure, you can sort of see that. All right, let's just see how this thing sounds or works. Turn it on, my headphones are plugged in. And if I unplug those, uh, nothing. So I guess we can change this up here and maybe... <laughs> So it's kind of like the mad scientist kind of action. Um, I'll just m make a message to read in a file that I created earlier. Um, that's right here. This is something I spent at least 10 minutes working on in uh, my favorite, the GIMP. Um, so now we can see that with this, it's a little bit more like what you might use it for. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, um, this all was instigated, this whole idea for the patch day was instigated by open source guitar. So if you like this, um, you can thank him. If you hate this, you can um, go and try and you know spam his email or something. All right, uh, so open source guitar, this is for you. And I hope I haven't just destroyed your life by giving everything away or nothing away or something. So I'm gonna change, I'm gonna do the other approach. I did say at the beginning that there was two approaches to doing this. The other approach would be instead of turning it into max values is just to keep it in the jitter world and, and um, use a buffer. Like this is a new object that you might not have seen before. So I guess I'll create one jit.buffer and you have to give it a name like you do most buffers. Uh, give it really something exciting like beans. Um, the next number you give it is the duration in milliseconds, just like a regular buffer. And just like a regular buffer, the next argument is how many channels. And in this case, I'm using three channels, one for red, one for green, one for blue. All right, this is where it gets a little kludgy maybe, but we use a jit.unpack. I just want to get rid of the alpha, so um, there's probably other ways of doing this. jit.unpack, I think by default it's four, but I'll put that there just in case. And then a jit.pack, this is where we'll just pack everything except the alpha. So we're gonna pack three, oops, we only need the number three. Okay, so this is the, that's the matrix set. That doesn't tell you much, but that will be the red in this case, the green in this case, and the blue in this case. All right, so we're gonna make a, the next thing I wanna do is to convert it into a um, float 33, uh, float 32 value, float 33. All right, so jit.buffer, if I look at the help on it, it says somewhere in here that it has to be a float 32 matrix, fine. 
Um, there's something called Coerce that you would imagine would do this, but it doesn't, as far as I can tell. So JIT.Matrix, just make a new matrix. Hey, matrix. Oh, man, I'm in trouble. JIT.Matrix, um, and it's going to have three planes of type float. I really can't spell today. Float 32, and I guess the other thing I'm going to do um, is I'm going to create it, make it um, uh, go back to something that's x on the x-axis is 240. That's because if we again look at the help on jit.buffer, uh, it's what the clue to why it did that is right here. Audio is represented uh, in a float 32 matrix with time across dimension zero. That means that if you have um, nothing on, on dimensions or if you're only one pixel wide as I am here on, on dimension zero, then you're only going to store one sample for each of those three channels and that wouldn't be much fun. You really can't do anything with it. And the other thing, well, let's have a look at what that matrix looks like. Again, I can just duplicate this thing. And it should look, for as far as you can tell, as far as the, you can tell using the naked eye, so to speak, it should look exactly the same as this one. Hey, but it doesn't. That's weird. Cool. Um, so what? So yeah, we need to, um, for time to be along dimension zero, you can see that time, um, well, it's, um, yes. If we're going to store this in a buffer, we actually want to store it with the other way around so that this would be time going across here. Um, time going downwards or <clears throat> so so I'm going to use something to rotate that image there's probably a way of uh, I'm guessing I kept on looking for ages for an object that would be able to just um, swap the dimensions of an, of an image and I suppose the only one that I came up with was the jit.rotor and that will rotate an image Let's look at the results of the JIT.rotor instead of the matrix. Um, I, I know what I'm going to put in here, <clears throat> but um, the message, uh, the first message is that you're interested in the anchor uh, underscore x. <clears throat> you want to anchor, <clears throat> you're generally speaking with a rotor, if you want it to rotate on its center, the image on its central axis, you want to rotate uh, at its center. Um, yeah, that makes sense. And then anchor underscore y 120, because that's the center now that we have a 240 by 240 matrix. So I can just put, yeah, anchor underscore x 120, un comma, anchor underscore y 120. And that should take care of that part of it. And as I did over here, I can not only rotate it, but I can rotate it so that it's um, upside down, so to speak. Uh, yeah, but it's going to be sideways, but sideways, I don't know how to say this. Theta is the word for rotation. Negative 1.57 will be um, like a half, or yeah, a, a quarter circle rotation, if you like. And we should see that rotation. Hmm. Not seeing much of anything. Now maybe I should hit that first. Let's see. Yeah, that's a bit better. Okay. So that's kind of what we're looking at. I think that looks about right. And then we can put this straight into our buffer. All right. So this is going to be now an audio buffer. So we can scroll on there and double click on that and verify that this is an audio buffer. It doesn't look as good as it did yesterday, but um, I might have made a mistake somewhere. Let's have a look. Yeah, okay. We'll say that's okay. <coughs> and I'm going to use uh, an FFT to um, basically use this buffer as a um, as frequencies. So now these are going to be the um, magnitudes of frequencies in an FFT. So let's do that. Let's make a new um, object. 
because we're going to load this into a PFFT. Naturally speaking, we want an FFT in. We need to give that a number, FFT in one. Then we're going to have FFT out one. So that's still an in. So FFT out one. Uh, we'll use FFT out two. <coughs> FFT out three. This is my red, green, and blue. I'm going to put those in three different places spatially. <coughs> we need to, what did I call this buffer? Jit.buffer beans. So I'm going to make a new object to index uh, the, the, the beans. And I'm going to do this on three different channels. Index beans on one, index beans on two, and index beans on three. If I could have probably done this a little smarter. Sample index, sample index, and sample index. You can tell I could have just copied these together or made something a little more um, one at a time. didn't need to make everything one, time, one at a time because now I'm going to do this multiply uh, three times. Wow. Okay. So yeah, actually at this point, usually at about this point when I realize I've made that mistake, I can just do this hook it all up and then duplicate the thing that needs duplicating which is all of that and change the numbers that's generally speaking a bit faster than uh, remaking the whole thing so this needs to be a two this needs to be a two this needs to be hooked up here either way you're going to get RSI and you know probably I needed to make two of those another one I forgot to hook up is the index <coughs> and the index and this to here and this to here and now we've just created the most amazing signal network ever. All right, so now this is um, our spectrum coming in and we're multiplying this index on the on the green uh, red sorry which will be this. We're multiplying our spectrum by that, um, by that buffer, by that channel on the buffer, and then the last thing I forgot to change was this number three and this number three here. All right, so now we have three outs and three um, in, in three buffer buffer channels, the red, green, blue channels. Uh, let's see, we'll put it in here. We'll call it. Um, I don't know rice, I guess, because rice and beans go really well together. We're going to now use the FPFFT, so PFFT, and we're loading a thing called rice, and it is, uh, sure, we'll make it 2048. That'll depend, that'll say how, how low the frequencies are, as an example, um, that we're using in, the, in our PFFT, and the number four for the number of channel, number of overlaps. Um, I'm going to have to save this somewhere, so I'll just hit save. I'll have to save it, like I said, in the same place where my rice is at. Um, and I guess it would sm be smart to call it something like, uh, like what? What did I call it? Okay, we'll call it Met uh, Synthy, so that's the name of the, uh, the patch of day. Now it should be able to find this. Let's type that four back in. Perfect. All right. So I can just stick anything random in here as a source for the filters in the FFT. I guess for the moment I'll make something pink, pink tilde. Um, you could use an, a sound source, you know, think of something cool to, that goes with the image that you're working. I'll stick this in the left and this in the right and this in the center. If this is super loud, then I don't know. That's why I don't wear headphones when I test things out. Just take them off and listen to them. You just the worst you can do is destroy your headphones. Oh, yes, that's kind of okay. All right. All right. So that was indeed patch of day twenty-eight, and I'll see you in twenty-nine.